Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared and today we are talking about self-defense knives. Now, these are knives that are gonna be very easy to retrieve or easy to deploy and get into action. And it's very difficult to stop you from getting to it and deploying and getting into action. It's also gonna be knives that are difficult to take away from you or difficult to stop you from using in, God forbid, a situation where you needed to use it. So we're gonna get right into the knives, but please stay tuned to the end because I want to talk a little bit about uh, knife self-defense and training and things like that. So stay tuned to the end. We're going to get right into the knives though. So starting the list off is from Shivworks. Now Shivworks also does a lot of training classes. They go around the country uh, doing classes, training knife defense and, and firearm defense and things like that. So definitely check them out. I'm hoping one of these days me and Craig get to collaborate and I get to go and get my ass kicked by his class. I would love that. Um, so hopefully sometime in the future, we get to do that. We get to collab with Craig and Shivwork. So. The Disciple is the first one on the list. Now, what I love about the Disciple is again, it's very difficult to stop you from getting this. You, um, The way I would carry it and the way it's designed to be carried is right in the front of your belt, kind of like where your belt buckle is. So if you can touch your belt buckle, then you can retrieve this knife. So since that's where your hands are naturally at already, you know, just walking around, that your hands are near your pockets and near your belt. So if something happened, it would be very difficult for me to stop you from grabbing your belt buckle, right? So, and like I said if you can grab your belt buckle you can grab the knife so it's very difficult to stop you from retrieving this blade then once you get it out you have a nice long worn cliff blade that's going to keep things at a distance that's one thing but if you're in a clinch or somebody's got you or grabs you from behind or from the side or is trying to pull you out of a car you can use it like a claw, you know, and it's, uh, you know, being a Warncliffe, it's super effective and devastating if it does end up hitting you. Now, you can also turn it around and use it in the Picol grip, you know, if you're more comfortable with that. So, you know, you got to use the, or do what is comfortable for you and what you train for. Like I said, we'll talk more about that in the end, but really really good quality it uses 12c27 steel i love 12c27 it's like a sandvik steel and that's a very tough steel very corrosion resistant holds a really good edge and it takes an incredibly sharp edge i've done a lot of sharpening on 12c27 and sandvik steels and things like that but the disciple it also comes in and this is another thing i love about um shivworks you can get the trainers for this you can um you can get this i believe in a double-edged version as well now, next is t -Kel Knives. I always recommend t -Kel Knives. We're gonna get back to Shivworks here in one second, but t -Kel Knives, 100% USA made. I highly, highly recommend anything from t -Kel. Their knives, I always say this, like if anything's gonna survive an apocalypse, it's gonna be a t -Kel knife. These things are virtually indestructible. Now, this one is the MR1. Picol, and it's designed to be in the Picol grip, but you can turn it around in the forward reverse grip, right? So you can use it like that same way we were talking about the, the knife earlier. This one does have an attitude adjuster on the front of it. So, you know, if you needed to punch with it, you can. Um, now, what I really like about T-Kells or something else I really like about T-Kells is his sheaths. He has a lot of different ways to carry his knives so basically any way that you're comfortable carrying he basically has a way to, to carry it mine is set up to go right in the front of my pants right behind my belt or right be in the inside of my pants tucked into the front side and because it's tucked into the front of my pants one you don't see it you don't even know it's there it's very hard to detect but two it's nearly impossible to stop me from getting to it because it's just right there near my belt buckle. So I can rapidly get it out, rapidly get into action, and you wouldn't even know it was coming because you wouldn't even know I had it. Um, so I really like that. You can also carry it in the pocket if you want to, um, you know, if that's, you know, a better option for you. So there's lots of different ways to carry it, but the sheets, 
no rattle, no tap, really good quality. And that's another thing. A lot of the knives on this list, I put here not only because of how good a quality the knife is, but also the sheaths. Because I have blades right now that I could totally recommend as far as the blade goes, but I won't because of the sheath. The sheath has to be good quality. It has to have good retention. It, it has to be safe because if you're in a situation where you're rolling around and heart rates are going and you know it, it's a stressful situation, you don't need the thing falling out you know, or something like that before you ever even get a chance to grab it. So the sheets are really, really good quality. Now, sticking with t -Kel knives, I have another one. I don't have it here, but I highly recommend it. And it's the Night Stalker. Now, I love the CQC Night Stalker, the one that has the double edge. So the tip of the spine is actually sharpened on the top of the, um, the drop point, making it a knife you can slash back and forth with if you want. Now, it they do, uh, he does do knives with the karambit ring or without. There's lots of customizations, you know, when you go on his site. But the Night Stalker is one I really like because it's great for EDC and, you know, it's great for self-defense. Now, uh, it also comes in a, a single-edged version as well. Now, if you want something a little bit more compact, you can go with the Night Stalker Warncliff. The Night Stalker Warncliff is uh, basically the same package, just, you know, a smaller blade. So it's going to be a little bit more concealable, a little bit more compact. And, you know, again, really, really good. It's got the little basher for the ring. So, you know, you can hit with it. Um, but really good stuff coming from t -Kel Knives. I, I recommend most things on his site. He has push daggers and all different kinds of other stuff uh, on his site. So definitely check that out. I will link them down in the description. So we had the Shivworks Disciple for number five. We had the t -Kel Knives MR1 for number two. We, then we had the Night Stalker from t -Kel for number three. In the number two spot, we have Shivworks El Nino. Now, mine has the Omni sheath. You can get these on Shivworks site. I highly recommend it because what it does is it makes it, it comes with a sheath of its own, but getting this one definitely upgrades it. What I love about it is it doesn't matter what direction you put the, the blade in, it will fit perfectly. Another thing is that if you get the trainer, which you should, if you get the trainer, the trainer fits just the same way. So it makes it to where you get to train with exactly what you're gonna be carrying. So I really like that. Now going back to the El Nino push dagger, 12C27, you can see the handle, it goes right into the palm. Now, I like to go between my pointer finger and middle finger, but a lot of people might want to go between the middle and the ring finger, which you can absolutely do. I like to go between the, the pointer and the, the middle finger. So you can slash back and forth. If you're somebody who, who punches already, like if you're somebody who in situations that, that gets sketchy, you're going to most likely punch. This might be up your alley. Um, the blade it is going to penetrate whatever you punch into because the way the handle's designed, it, it just impacts the inside of your palm. So you have a lot of power in the punch when you punch with this. Now, I also love that this is very difficult to get out of my hand. Um, I, I don't even see how somebody can get this out of my hand because it, it's going to be life threatening to, to try to grab this from me. You can't get to the handle. The only thing you can get to is the blade and you know, that's going to cut you. So I like that. It's very easy to deploy rapidly. Um, it's very hard to stop me from deploying this rapidly. And once I have it out, it's very difficult to stop me from using it. Now going to number one, the first spot, my favorite of the list of these lists, they're all really good. Let me just be clear. Any one of these will be perfect, but we have the double edged new clinch pick 2.0. So they had the single edge clinch pick 2.0. This one's the double edged version. I really, really like this because one, it goes right in the front of the belt, right by your belt buckle. Very difficult to stop you from retrieving it. Once you have your hand around the handle and you deploy it, there's nothing that they can get a hold of. 
to take this from you. It's all dangerous. The whole thing is dangerous. So you can slash back and forth. If somebody comes from your side, you know, and um, wraps their arms around you or tries to grab your arms, you can claw your way out. You can claw backwards. Um, you know, you can obviously poke and puncture. You can turn it around in a hammer grip if you really want to, you know, and claw your way out that way. I like the forward grip, but it's, it's a blade that, like I said, to try to get this from me is so dangerous, you most likely aren't gonna try. And if you did, it's gonna be a very bad day for you. So it makes it to where it's nearly impossible to strip from your hand. Again, 12C27 steel, love 12C27, really, really good quality steel. Um, and you know the, the handle, it's a perfect size to fit right inside your hand where you can still make a good fist. You could still punch if you needed to. So, and you know, because it doesn't hang out the end, there's just nothing for anybody to grab. It has nice gripping on the side. The sheath, again, works really good. Clicks in really nicely. I love that. And it's super easy to carry, super compact, very lightweight, and you don't even know it's on you. You can carry it all day and forget that you even have it on you until you need it. And to be honest, a lot of these knives on this list all would work good as EDC knives as well. So, you know, if you wanted to carry one of these, you know, like say going back to the Disciple, if you wanted to carry this to, to make normal everyday cuts, you can. Just make sure you know how to sharpen so that your edge is always sharp, even if you're using your knife. You know, same thing with the MR, the MR-1. I mean, this is gonna be something that if you really needed to, you could totally open up a box with it. You can cut some straps, you know, so it's something that you could totally use as, as an EDC knife as well. But as I said before, make sure you keep your edges sharp. Now, what I wanted to talk about in the end, and we'll, we'll talk about just a couple folders here in a second too. Um, Train, guys. Train, train, train. I can't stress that enough. Now, I, I'm not even trying to pretend like, like I know everything about everything. In fact, a lot of you watching this know a lot more than I do, right? So, uh, you know, but, but I do think it's important to stress, and I think most of you guys all know this, and it goes without saying, but I need to say it, that train as much as possible when you can, however you can, it, you know, especially under stressful situations, you know, get yourself under some stress with your heart rate going. Like I said, Shivworks does a lot of classes and stuff. A lot of people ask me, well, how do I train? How do I train? The best way would be to, to you know, sign up to a course or something. But if you can't do that, let's say there's nothing in your surrounding area, get a friend, get a friend that's like-minded that you can train with, you know, that safely with, with training tools, you know, and, and put your, put your guys selves into situations that, that's a little bit uncomfortable and, and, you know, wrestle around a little bit. It, it'll be very good for you. You'll have a lot of fun, but I do think that that's probably the, the next best thing to do that. Now, if that's out of reach too, if you, you know, for some reason you, you can't find anybody to do that with you, the, the least you could do is train on deploying it, getting it out maybe get your heart rate going a little bit practice getting in and out of the sheath well not in but out of the sheath which is the most important part um, because you know you're gonna get things caught on your shirt you're, you're gonna you're gonna mess up a lot things are gonna happen so let all those things happen while you're training so that you're prepared for it in the future you know um so that's what i would recommend even you know if you don't have anybody at least train with it to some degree by yourself getting it in and out getting it in and out maybe running around getting your heart rate going while rapidly deploying it maybe you can get some sort of objects that you can you know train on you know as far as hitting and cutting um but but you're never going to be able to train for exactly what will happen or at least you can but it you know, I grew up in a, a, a really bad area. I've seen a lot of violence my whole life. I've been through a lot of violence. And almost every scenario I've seen was so difficult to plan for. Like, it was almost impossible to even plan for. Like, it's just out of the world stuff that happens. And it's like, you would have never expected that to happen. So it's very difficult to plan for that. But that's also why it's so good to, to train under very, very stressful situations. So that no matter what happens, at least you've dealt with some very frustrating, you know, things that, that it makes it to where you're more capable under stress and under pressure. So um, I, I, I can't stress that enough. Try to train as much as you can. 
Now, really quick, we'll talk a little bit more about the knife defense because I know you guys are screaming, use a firearm. You guys probably already wrote it in the comments. If that's you, leave me another comment. Uh, <laughs> folding knives, folding knives. I will say, I think a fixed blade is always gonna be better, but I understand everybody's different, right? And um, I think as far as folding knives go, I think one really good one, if you were gonna carry it, is the Spyderco Matriarch, especially with the Emerson Wave, because that means you can deploy it rapidly out of your pocket as you're pulling it out. It will already de be deployed like a fixed blade. And then you have this nasty recurved blade that's just, it's devastating. You swipe this at anything, it's gonna act like a tiger claw. Once it hits, it's gonna yank it, right? Yank whatever you hit into this edge and it's just gonna just, it's gonna be devastating for sure. So this is something you can effortlessly use in a self-defense situation and do a great amount of damage. And you can rapidly deploy it. Very lightweight, easy to carry. Now it's pretty much only good for, for that. Don't get me wrong, you can open things up with it. You can use it as an EDC knife, but since it's serrated, you're not gonna wanna get it dull, you know, unless if you know how to sharpen serrations. But another one that I really like is the Yojumbo or Yojimbo, which this is originally designed, as far as the fixed blade version goes, because it originally came from a fixed blade, um, as a self-defense knife. But they do have the folding version, which I do like because the Warncliffe is designed so that the pressure when you hit with this edge, the pressure goes all the way out to the tip. So like knives with a belly, there's a drop off point. Once it gets to the belly, the blade will slide off. Well, with a Warncliffe, the blade, the pressure goes from here all the way out to the tip, the exact same amount of pressure. So you get a lot of cutting edge as far as slicing and swiping goes. Plus, you know, you can see how much it opens up if you puncture with it. These are, these do have a very strong lock. And if you wanted the wave feature, you can put a little zip tie around the hole right here and and give it a an a wave feature basically like an emerson wave that way you can deploy it rapidly so um like i said uh fixed blades are always going to be the best but there are some folding knife options that will work pretty good but again train 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 practice pulling it out practice pulling it out at, at rapidly under pressure now as far as firearms go because i know a lot of you are screaming oh i would just i would just shoot them like the, you know, it's like, there's a lot of people that can't carry firearms, even like myself, like I'm a felon. I can't carry a firearm. So I don't want to be empty handed, right? Um, I can't legally carry a firearm at least. Now, a lot of other people, same thing, or maybe the area they're in or, or the situations that they get involved in, you know, maybe they're not allowed to carry a firearm. There's so many different reasons. And then a firearm is not always the best tool, right? In some cases, it might be the worst tool where a knife will come into play and possibly be the better option. Like there's a lot of different scenarios. And then if you talk about regular scenarios that aren't even like a, a, an attacker or like a human attacker, like um, a rolled over car or maybe a, a baby trapped in, a, in um, a car seat, you gotta cut it free. You know, that's where a knife comes into play, right? If you need to cut somebody's clothes off and tend to their wounds or, you know, things like that, right? Um, I always give this scenario because I think it's a really good one. If a dog attacks your child, and even if you have a firearm, you might not want to take that shot, right? It might be better to just, you know, go to work with a blade because you don't want the bullet, or, you know, to go through and through and hit your child. So, so many scenarios. It's just good to be prepared for as much as you can. So, you know, I just I just want to end the subject because I know so many people, every time you talk about a self-defense knife, the firearm squad comes in and pretends like that's the only line of defense, you know, <laughs> as if a blade is just absurd and, and a firearm is going to end everything. In a lot of cases, a firearm is the better option, right? But it, it does depend on the person in the place. But anyways, I just, you know, I want all of you guys to to definitely do what you can to, to train and be you know, knowledgeable about the tools you're carrying on you and, you know, and to stay tough, man, stay as tough as you can. You know, we need tough men out there and society's relying on you. I love you guys until next time. Peace.